few days ago when the NBA 2K20 demo came out, everybody was gassed. A couple hours goes by, you play the demo, everybody's disappointed. Then a couple days go by and now everybody's in agreement that the demo is absolutely useless. Now the developers made it clear from the start that they wanted to use this demo as an opportunity to get feedback so that they can make changes to the final game before it drops. That was probably why they released it three weeks before the game launched so they have that time to make those changes. But I can't help but just sit back and be disappointed because we really didn't get a chance to experience much. So let me take you through what happened because since the demo has released, there's been a whole slew of new information and changes to the final game out of nowhere. It's like every two hours I look at my phone, there's a notification. Nope, this thing that was like this in the demo is gonna be completely different in the real game. All right, so let's get started. So Ronnie2k is streaming, and we know when Ronnie streams, he tends to cap a lot. But still, you have to take what he's saying seriously, because he's, what is he? I don't know what he does, let me ask him. Greg posted this tweet. Word also is that Ronnie confirmed that there are more pie charts than what we've seen in the NBA 2K20 demo today. So if you want to experience more, then we can wait once the game drops. So if the demo was supposed to be an opportunity for everybody to experience the game, test their builds, find out what they want to play with, but there's more pie charts we haven't seen yet, then it renders it useless. Still, I haven't seen a clip of the stream, so I was a little skeptical. Plus, Ronnie does cap a lot. There's nothing you could do to delete the build that you've made so once you create six builds in the demo it's wraps and once you click continue past the attribute part and you get to the badge part you can't go back to make any changes so i guess the only purpose it now serves is to maybe familiarize you with all the new badges in the game the creative character process is different but that's about it. Just memorize what the badges do because there's a lot of new ones and even the ones that came back from previous years serve a different purpose. Mike Wang shocked the world because he said this. Thanks for the feedback today. I increased the shot meter size so it's closer to 19. Stamina and movement speeds will get buffed as well. What? Yo, not one day went by in the demo and there's already changes. Now, these are changes that I tend to like. Now, I do like these changes so I'm not mad at it. I I don't like that tiny ass 2K18 shot meter they gave us. Remove that. So everybody told Mike Wang to increase the size. He did. Now those changes that he made aren't gonna be apparent until the full game's released. So if you're playing the demo, it's gonna be the same. But the, maybe the more important point is the stamina. Stamina and movement speeds will get buffed as well. A lot of people were saying that they weren't out of energy super quickly. Things got more interesting on Twitter because we just got done listening to how you should ration your stamina this year, don't spam turbo because you will get tired by the end of the game. One of the more popular NBA 2K developers, the Czar, was posting just that. He was proud of the new stamina improvements they've made to the game. He's a big sim head, so I'm not surprised. But when he heard the news Mike Wang was changing the sliders, he quote tweeted saying, boo, with a laughing crying emoji. He was one of the developers helping explain the changes that were made to stamina for NBA 2K20. And all of those tweets that he made about stamina have been deleted, all except this one. Get used to beating people with your moves and then giving a small boost on launch after you create an opening, not depending on Turbo to get you open. Now, I was hesitant because it's different than what we're used to, but I was open to at least trying that system out because who knows, maybe it would have been good. A lot of people see something that's different and immediately they start to complain. And it's like, we haven't even seen it yet. First of all, the demo tells us nothing about the final product, so let's ignore that. So if none of us played the actual game, how could you complain about a system you haven't tried yet? Unless it's so blatantly ridiculous that it's obvious to everybody, but in this case, it's not. I found it interesting, because that means that Mike Wang probably doesn't need much approval before making any sort of gameplay change. Even if some developers don't agree with the change that Mike Wang is gonna make, if there's enough people that put pressure on him, he'll do it anyway. Interesting, very, very, very interesting. So talking about applying pressure, Dre responded to Mike Wang asking, now can you tell us the height cutoff customization jump shots for bigs? Now if you remember, Mike Wang said to create more balance this year, if your character is too tall or too big, you'll be limited in your jump shot availability. So there's gonna be some jump shots you just can't use. Now nah, that's not a bad idea. You gotta think logically here. If everybody's gonna create stretch bigs like 2K19, what's a way we can incentivize people to use other smaller builds? That's what changing the meta and balance looks like. 
I was interested to see how the system would work, but I was also skeptical. Mike Ryan responded to Dre's tweet saying, I could be wrong on this one, but I think the logic was either 6'10 and up or 6'8 and up if over 220 pounds, so that weight also plays a factor. He clarified a little bit later saying, if you want access to all jump shot animations, either be 6'7 or shorter or be under 6'10 and less than 220. Created jump shots aren't locked out from bigs, just certain bases. So they still have access to the jump shot creator, just not as many bases, which makes sense. I'm all for the system. I just wanna see what it's all about. Obviously, stretch bigs are worried, right? Because a lot has changed from 2K19. Who knows if stretch bigs are gonna be ass cheeks or if they're gonna be the best build in the game. Orlando and Chicago said this. Mike Wang rephrased himself and said bigs still get custom jump shots but can't use certain bases, so all of us stretch bigs still gonna be straight. A lot of stretch bigs, though, were applying pressure. Mike Wang, bro, what's good with you? And then out of nowhere, Mike Wang dropped this bomb. Update, we will no longer be locking out jump shot animations based on height slash weight for the final game, so don't let that impact your build making decision. So at this point, everybody's like, what? There's a few things that just happened. The idea that Mike Wang had for this made sense logically, theoretically. But in practice, we had no idea how it was gonna do. I guess he thought it was too risky. Maybe there was a bug with the system. I'm not entirely sure, but he folded super quick. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you have a sharpshooter, don't even think about it. Cause I was thinking about making a sharpshooter before I heard this news and I had to delete all my builds. It seems like, again, if you wanna be a top tier shooter, it's gonna be a stretch big. It's not gonna be a sharpshooter. I quote tweeted Mike Wang's tweet and said, Delete your sharpshooter build and just start working on your stretch now. So if you spent the first two days of the demo tinkering with builds, seeing what works for you based on the information we had, your whole world just got flipped upside down once when he told you the criteria for the cutoff and then again once he told you that nope, that doesn't matter after all. Nadex put out a tweet saying, stop playing the demo, those builds are invalid. So literally every hour that goes by, I'm reflecting on this and I'm coming to the conclusion that the demo just keeps getting more and more useless. I might just have to delete it. <laughs> it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. I mean, there's been a lot of changes already. What's the chances we're gonna see more? Um, apparently 100%, because out of nowhere, Ronnie, Mr. Capilot tweeted this. So I'm seeing the following feedback in my tweets and I wanna make sure there's nothing else big I forgot. Custom, more pies. Small forwards, people were complaining small forwards were too trash, they need a buff. Stamina, blow by animations, hop step dunks, overpowered screens, shot meter size. All of those are valid. If, you, if you've been on Twitter the last few days, you've seen examples of all of that. People posting gameplay with 2K17-esque brick wall screens, just bodying people. Then you see some something like that, you might think to yourself, all right, when I make my build, I'm gonna make Pick Dodger a priority. Cause if everybody's being bodied, I gotta dodge it somehow. Pick Dodger became the most valuable defensive badge in the game. Then out of nowhere, we're hearing it might get nerfed. So it might not be. I get it. The demo is supposed to be for feedback, right? And that's all we're doing. We're giving the developers feedback so that they can make the adjustments so that when the final game drops, we don't have to go through this. So when you look at it like that, all of this makes sense. I just feel bad for the people that spent all that time getting excited for the demo, thinking it was gonna be the only to find out it was just one game, but at least we can test our builds and see what we want to make in 2K20, except you can't do that now either. So the demo is cool if you're like super casual. Like maybe this is your first time playing 2K. I have no doubt that in the next couple days we're gonna hear more information. I'm not against it. I'm not saying that these are bad things. I prefer that the changes are made now so that when the game comes out, everything is solid and straight. Cause you can only do so much in terms of game testing. Once everybody has access to the game, that's the real game test. Very fantastic developers like Naughty Dog and CD Projekt Red, they make sure their game is polished and before launch. But 2K comes out every single year and they're severely understaffed, so I understand. If anything, I'm like I always do, what's, hey, say it with me now, hire more people. It would solve a lot of problems, but hey, you heard me say that like 257 times this week. I'm reserving judgment on a lot of things. I really didn't get a chance to experience much. People ask agent, bro, what do you think about the game? What do you think about the demo? I don't know. <laughs> like, there's no conclusion I could come to based on what we experienced. So keep that in mind. Everybody's trying to find the best build, and I feel like this year the system is way more complicated than years prior. So if you're trying to come up with the best build, you're probably gonna miss. If I were you, I'd just create a build you think you're gonna have fun with. Have some fun with that build for the first few months of the game's launch, 
And then when everybody comes to a conclusion on the best or the best two or three builds in the game, just make that one. The meta is gonna change, there's gonna be patches. Some of you guys spend too much time trying to find the best build, you forget to have fun. I'm absolutely making a slasher build this year. I don't care if it's the worst archetype in the game. It just seems like a lot of fun based on what I've seen in terms of the gameplay. Anyway, NBA 2K20 is a couple weeks away and now we have a dead demo that nobody's gonna play anymore. So I guess we're back to waiting. Hey, follow me on Instagram, link in the description. There's four videos on the screen. You can watch any one of those. Unless you have something really important to do, then I recommend you get that out the way first. I'm out. Peace.